wondered what happens after ever after? Have you always yearned to know if the end is really the end? No? Well, you're going to find out anyway. With your hosts, Andy, Tammy, and Gina. This is 2D Vision. Hello everyone, welcome to the second official episode of 2 Division. This is Equals Explained. I am your host, Gina, and I'm joined, of course, by my two co-hosts, Andy and Tammy. Hello. Tammy, do you want to say hello? Yeah, I did. Hi. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're, we're very excited, you guys, because officially today we posted the pilot episode, and we are so excited. Yeah. I, I don't know. Mm-hmm. It, it, it yeah, was like a rush. Know. <laughs> like because we we've been sitting yeah, on that episode uh, for so long. We recorded that like a month ago <laughs> or something. Uh, it was it's it was not a month ago. It was uh, well maybe it was a month ago. It was like three <laughs> weeks. It was a long time, and I, I've been wanting to to post the the episode for so long. But for some reason or another, I was waiting for the iTunes approval, and then we were waiting for the official art for the podcast. Mm-hmm. And and which is well, amazing, by the way. Uh, yeah, I love it so much. I love that. Uh, if you look at it, it has a lot of details uh, that we mm-hmm. asked for, and <laughs> I just love it so much. I keep staring at it. <laughs> tell, her about the, tell them about the detail that didn't quite make it in, Gina, for you. Oh, well, at, at the end, we did, because uh, there's this, if you see the drawing, the one, I'm the one at, on the right, and I'm holding a book, and the book says, <laughs> uh, Romeo and Juliet, but it's scratched. It's scratched. Yeah. Scratched out and it says, uh, the Lion King 2. <laughs> <laughs> and I just love that because it's, it's just so funny to, to reference uh, the fact that, you know, the Lion King is based on Hamlet and the Lion King 2 is very loosely based on Romeo and Juliet. And the Lion King 3 is based on Rosa Grant's Ogier Destein Are Dead. Sorry, I murdered that name, but it's impossible to pronounce. And that, that is also a very important piece of cinema and literature so it is really funny that you know the Lion King trilogy is like based on <laughs> Shakespeare like wow amazing <laughs> yeah um, they did it the most yeah of course so yeah that's that's kind of what what's been going on uh also a quick shout out to Hunter and my clients from this <laughs> order because they uh they we posted the episode today and they kind of noticed us on Twitter so we kind of say we want to say hi and we hope you enjoy the podcast thank you some <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Did you just call them step no, five? Sh- I'm gonna do this now. Oh no, you won't. <laughs> I won't okay. like you. Okay, so I think we can get down, get down to business. Yeah. Uh, what to defeat the seabulls? To defeat the sea. We don't really. We can't defeat them. It's no. It's just no. there. we're like twenty years <laughs> too late. <laughs> this is the the first the first. Well, this is the second official sequel that we have, but it is the first one that is direct to home video. Yes. And of course, we're talking about the legendary, the one and only <laughs> Aladdin, The Return of Jafar. Aren't you excited? Oh, I am. A hot man. How can you what not a hot, be? This is what a, a masterpiece. Hot man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, to begin, let's talk a little bit about uh, the first one, the, the original Aladdin movie. Um, what are you, what are your guys Thoughts on Aladdin? What are your memories? What do you think of it? Tell me. Okay, I can start. Um, well, the strongest memory for me is that I used to hate A Whole New World. What? I used to hate Amazing. that song because I could never listen to it because I would get so embarrassed because, like, the one story about <laughs> that movie that my parents would always tell me is that whenever a whole world, a whole new world came on, me and my dad would just belt out a duet when I was like five. Aww. And it used to embarrass me so much. And I was like, I can't listen to this song when I was like a teenager. I was like, this is horrible. I don't want to remember it. But now I like look back at it fondly. But yeah, I used to be super embarrassed. I used to hate that song. <laughs> Oh my god! Because it used to embarrass me. I love, yeah, I love Tammy's family stories. <laughs> oh, it's oh. always so fun. I was about to say Tammy's are always like the best stories. They're the oh. cutest. Oh. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I love that. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that's my memory of Aladdin. How about you guys? Well, for me, I uh, this is very sad, but I usually watched all the Disney movies like by myself. You know, I'm like the the youngest of three sisters, and my sisters are like very much older than me, so. So, you know, whenever I watch movies, I basically watch them by myself. So I don't have that, you know, that watching oh. it with my dad or with my mom or something. But I, I, I had a lot of fun. 
I, I, you know, Aladdin is just one of those movies that I watched on repeat all the time. It was always, it was always, I, I don't even know. Like, I, I own the VHS and I own a lot of Disney VHS, of course, but mm. I just have this huge memory of watching Aladdin over and over again. And I just never got tired of it. There was like this point in my life where I could like recite the, <laughs> the dialogues. Like I could, I can just, I could burst right now and tell you like the genius speech. Like when he comes out of the lamp, I know that word. Oh my god! Oh my god! You should do it now. I, I, do it I just now. know it in Spanish, and it's gonna be awkward because <laughs> yeah, this podcast is in English. But you know, I watch it a lot, of course, it, in Spanish. If you support us enough, maybe we can do uh, a bonus feature of Gina <laughs> reciting the whole Aladdin movie. Aladdin, yeah. a one-woman show uh, yeah. by Gina. <laughs> oh my yeah. gosh! <laughs> but yeah, I just I just love Aladdin. I just I don't know because. Some, you know, some of these movies like Hercules and Aladdin were made, you know, to appeal to the boy audience okay. because there was a lot of princesses movies. And, you know, I think Disney didn't want to, like, alienate the boys. So they kind of started, like, with Aladdin and Hercules and something. But I, I mm -hmm. just, as a kid, you don't notice that and you just enjoy the movie for what it is. And I, I, I loved Aladdin just as much as any other Disney princess. And I, I knew the songs yeah. and everything. It was so fun because, as I said, I was alone by myself in my room watching it. And I kind of just ran around my room and when, and one, one jump ahead came out, came oh. out. And oh. I just, I, I loved like jumping on the bed and pretending I was Aladdin, you know? Uh, yeah. yeah, it was a lot yeah. of fun. I have very fun memories of Aladdin. It was just, Aww. it's just a movie that's, that's always been there. Yeah. Uh, well, for me, first, I want to say that you're right. I found it funny. Uh, that Hercules, Tarzan, Aladdin, blah, blah, they're like the boy movies, and they're the only ones, like, from the Renaissance star that they broadcast on Disney XD, or oh, that's what I remember when I watched TV in that time. Uh, but okay, my my story with Aladdin, I don't know, it, it has always been there, like, a lot of Renaissance movies, and, and not only Renaissance movies, like, a lot of Disney movies, it's always been there. And but I do remember really liking it, and actually my mom loves the genie so much. Oh. He she <laughs> like loved Aladdin because of the genie, and I, I I don't know I have a a lot of memories with Aladdin in the parks, and by the parks I mean Disneyland because I've only been to Disneyland. Um, but I remember seeing the watching the show on California Adventures before it was frozen, and I I remember really enjoying it, and it was like. Where One of the first, yeah, play. yeah, That's okay. yes, and it Is was frozen now. Yeah, since no. two, since two thousand fourteen, since twenty fourteen. Aladdin's gone and from the, the from the California Adventures Theater. Yeah, how, how long have you not been there? Shit. <laughs> yeah, I, I heard it's really good. Oh, we we couldn't that. go last time. Okay, but I remember Aladdin, and I remember uh, it was one of the last days that. Me and my family were in Disneyland, and the first time we went, I was just a kid, and my mom was really sad because we didn't see the genie, and I remember distinctly, in the in the very last day, I was in the store, and then I saw the genie like at the door or something, and I literally I had something in my hand from the store, and I ran to my mother that was outside, and she was like so mad because she was like, you can just. Get out of the store. Steal from Disney. <laughs> I was like, Mom, I'm Aladdin. <laughs> no, it, it was it was just like Oh my no. I don't know. Didn't but it was that, so excited no. because I, I wanted my mom to see the genie and okay, we had the picture and I, I saw it recently and it's really cute. Um <laughs> But yeah. <laughs> yeah, so Aladdin a, a great, great, great movie. Just great. Uh, I want I want to like go through it like very quickly in case someone like hasn't seen it in a while you know Aladdin <laughs> is just a story of this like street rat that finds this lamp and out of the lamp comes this genie that grants him three wishes and he uses the wishes to kind of make the princess fall in love with him which is more m much more cute than it I, I'm making it sound <laughs> it's really cute <laughs> yeah and there's this guy who's the villain who's kind of like manipulating the sultan. He wants to take over uh, Agrabah, the city, and he steals the lamp, he steals the genie, and then, you know, Aladdin uses his own uh, hunger for power against them, and he gets turned into a genie himself, and he gets trapped in a lamp, 
forever and ever. <laughs> or that's what we thought. Oh, <laughs> good thing we have a sequel to show us what really happened. Because everybody wanted to know what happened to Jaff <laughs> Genie Jafar, of course. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, you know, before we jump right into the sequel, yeah. So, you know, Aladdin, a very solid movie, and it's, um, it's a very, um, Big moment of the Renaissance, I think. Yeah. I think it's in the yeah. in the heart of a lot of people. I, mm -hmm. I think this is the movie that cemented the Renaissance. Maybe because the Little Mermaid was like, okay, we started this, and we have this good movie. And then Beauty and the Beast was like, oh, okay, we have another good movie. And then Aladdin came out, and it was like, okay, we, we are setting up for something. Yeah. Yeah, it was the third in great the movie, like in a row. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, the Lion King was well, like the big bang. Was a big bang that like yeah, set okay. it all together. Well, we mentioned the Rescuers Down Under and how it is part of the Renaissance, but it's not really considered yeah. like one of the Ren like it's just it's like the the mm -hmm. foster child of the Renaissance. <laughs> so you know, the Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, and Aladdin are the ones that really like they they made the Renaissance be the Renaissance. Yeah, and then yeah, so of course. Of course, the, the movie deserved a sequel, <laughs> and that's what we're talking about right now. Um, so, so Aladdin: Return of Jafar came out in May of 1994, just a month before another little movie came out called The Lion King. Oh. And of course, you can tell by the animation that this was <laughs> made like in the very same time period. Like, how can you not tell? <laughs> oh my! Oh my God! Yep. Yeah, please don't. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I'm, I try to be less sarcastic. I'm trying. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so Aladdin, The Return of Jafar, focuses on, actually it doesn't focus a lot on Jafar, if we think about it. Oh. So basically the story is that, uh, you know, Aladdin is living happily ever after with Jasmine at the, at the palace, and, and, he, and the Sultan loves him, the Sultan wants him to be the next vizier, because Jafar was, you know, yeah. a villain. Genius. Yeah, and, and so while all this is happening, Aladdin doesn't want to be... Aladdin doesn't want to be the next vizier and, and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and then Iago, the parrot, escapes from the lamp because he was trapped with, with Jafar. But he escapes. He manages to escape and he finds his way back to Agrabah where he kind of accidentally meets Aladdin and he's trying to get on his good side so he can go back to his life of luxury at the palace. So, you know, he's trying to make, ha to have Aladdin have pity on him. And then something happens and there's this gang of thieves that's after Aladdin because he, you know, he stopped them from robbing something at the beginning of the movie. And Iago kind of ends up saving Aladdin's life by mistake. And Aladdin's like, oh my God, you saved my life. I owe you. And he takes him back to the palace. But um, he knows that Jasmine and the Sultan are not going to be happy with it. So he kind of just, he's hiding it. And that, that, like, that, that was like a big uh -huh. thing that like, I didn't enjoy about the movie. Because why, why couldn't Aladdin just come right out and say to Jasmine what happened? You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's... It's like the usual liar, re liar reveal that you know it's going to happen. And you're like, uh... Okay. I hate that. Yeah, it's a... It's a really lazy trope, and I don't like it. I don't want. I don't enjoy it. Yeah, because it's been just overdone. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So basically, Aladdin is trying to have the Sultan and Jasmine um, think think uh, differently about Yago, but then Jafar finally comes back, uh -huh. and he uses this uh, thief called Abysmal to kind of and he manips, manipulates him to bring him back to Agrabah and take revenge on Aladdin and everyone. And he kind of uh, finds Iago and he's like, oh, you need to come back and work with me. And can and Iago kind of doesn't want to because he's kind of growing fond of Aladdin and the gang. But he ends up, you know, um, helping Jafar. And they set up this whole plan to kind of, I think, kill the Sultan. I think that was their plan. Uh -huh. And, yeah. Uh -huh. So they're using yeah. Iago to... to um, take Aladdin and the Sultan to some place, like, far away, where they can, you know, um, do whatever they... <laughs> I, I don't even remember the plot of this movie. Like, <laughs> they want to get rid of the Aladdin and the Sultan, and <laughs> the point is that out. Iago helps Jafar, and then he feels really bad about it. And, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, then everything is, like, going to ruins, and Jasmine and the Sultan are in, in, in some cell 
and some dungeon mm. on the palace, and Jaf- and Jafar is taking over, and Aladdin is about to to be uh, executed, and the genie helps him because Iago frees the genie, and genie comes and saves Aladdin, and then it's just the climax of the movie is basically they they try them trying to defeat Jafar. Now with Iago on their side because he kind of has a change of heart and yeah. he realizes he doesn't want to be the bad guy anymore and he helps Aladdin and helps the genie and helps everyone to defeat Jafar <laughs> by heroically throwing the lamp on lava. So yeah. Jafar's uh, lamp disintegrates like the the Wicked Witch of the West from <laughs> Wizard of Oz. It, it was the further moment of the movie. <laughs> The evil is defeated, and <laughs> everyone goes back to happily ever after, like we were at the beginning of the movie. But so, with Iago. But with Iago. Yeah. So, yeah, that's basically the plot of the movie. Like, uh, <laughs> I think I made it sound more interesting than it uh, than it actually is. <laughs> oh, but it kind of made me realize that the genie doesn't do a lot. Because oh, I, I right. just mentioned the genie, like, at the very end, when he actually saves Aladdin from being executed, but hmm. he doesn't really do much. Maybe it's because he's not voiced by Robin Williams anymore. Mm. Yes. Okay. So before we get to that, like <laughs> quick like reactions to the movie. Like, what were you thinking when you were watching it? Okay, me. Okay, I will say, I, I think I never watched this movie before. Maybe like little snippets on Disney Junior or something. But I remember the series. I don't remember this movie. Um. And it, it's surprising because it's really not the return of Jafar. I mean, he does return, but it's mostly Diago the movie. <laughs> it's like, okay, he oh got the redemption. I guess he's one of those redeemed Disney villains, Disney sidekicks, maybe. Um, that we that we will see like quite a few on this on this list. Yes, yes. Um, reactions to the movie. <laughs> it's funny because it's the first movie that. You notice, you know, it doesn't really try. Um, but I don't know. I think it was okay. I know maybe it's because I know we have a lot of wars movies ahead of us. Uh, so I guess <laughs> it was just like, ah, but okay. I, 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 but I couldn't pass the animation. Okay. It was, it was yeah. just so bad. I mean, they, they made this movie with about, five dollars or something because yeah <laughs> it really doesn't show like they made any efforts um i don't know so, so in some places the even the editing is really jumpy you have like one character here and then when the same character is in another part of the room in the next in the next right. and the next frame and it's really like you didn't check this out you didn't proof check this before you released yeah. it uh, or maybe they did, they didn't care. Uh, but yeah, it was overall over underwhelming. Yeah. Yeah, just that. Tammy? Like, I don't know. I'm not I'm not mad at it. Yeah. Like, I know what it is. I knew what I was expecting. I just, it's not a good film. <laughs> I'm not going to watch it again. I'm probably not going to show it to my children. <laughs> it was just... <laughs> It's just, there's so much good quality films out there, so, like, why waste your time on this? Like, even, like, there are bad films I can enjoy. This isn't a bad... Aha! It was, like, just... Just there. It isn't even boring. <laughs> it's just there. <laughs> well, I, for one, really enjoy the fact that it's only, like, 70 minutes long. Oh, yeah. It's was very good. short. But, you know, we were watching it, it and then I... Like, I was, like, I was, like, watching the, like, the timer. I was, like, when is this over? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ali and I were watching it and I think at some point we kind of had to pause it for something and we realized we were, we were already halfway through the movie and nothing had happened and, and Jafar hadn't returned yet Jafar hadn't Jafar returned, returned to return Jafar <laughs> halfway through the movie it had only been about Iago and Iago Iago has oh two God. songs in this ya- Iago oh my God. He sings I Iago think. has two full songs and he sings them yeah, who's the, I mean, who's, who's, the, who's the actor that portrays Iago it's, again? Uh, that's actually I want to to talk about this because I think it's very interesting. You know, uh, it's the same actor who does yes. uh, Iago. Gilbert, you know, Gilbert Gottfried. That's uh, his name. Oh yeah, Gilbert Gottfried. Yes, but you know, I'm gonna go right and say it right yeah. now because I was watching it and I was like, 
I can't believe, like, uh, of course, the, the voice actors would never come back to this because I was listening to to Jasmine sing. He do, she doesn't sing a lot, but no. she does sing like, like half a two two lines, maybe mm-hmm. three. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, this is not Leo Salong. And like, uh, of, course, uh, oh. n- of course, of course, no one that. came back. Mm-hmm. I was so sure. I think maybe because I haven't watched Aladdin in English as much. Yeah. But I just mm-hmm. thought like nobody from the original cast had returned because why would they? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then researching the podcast, I found out that everyone returned. Mm-hmm. Everyone. Yeah. The, vo- everyone. the original voice of Aladdin, okay. the singing and speaking voice, uh, the Lena Larkin who does uh, Jasmine, she came back. Uh, mm-hmm. the only th- there's only three people who didn't come back. Uh, Robin Williams, mm-hmm. um, Leah Salonga. Leah Salonga, and oh, I forgot his name. The the actor who plays the Sultan on the original. Oh, uh, he doesn't come back, and he is replaced by uh, Val Beren. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Val 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 Beren. He does the voice of uh, Dawson in The Great Mouse Detective. Oh, yeah. Is it because the original actor died? I, oh. No, because I was looking through IMDb and it says, like, they, they don't know the reason why the original actor didn't come back. Okay. Like He didn't want to. <laughs> yeah, of course. Like, we know the reason. He read the <laughs> script and he was like, like I think I'll pass. <laughs> but I'm okay. so baffled because everyone else came back. And not, not only did they come back, but they also voiced... They they repeat the voices on the Latin King of Thieves movie oh. and on the TV show. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, I think it's nice that that they they have the whole gang back together. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I find it so weird. <laughs> I, it's just so weird for me. And you know the the woman who he, uh, sings uh, the voice of Jasmine is Liz oh. Calloway. He, yeah. And she's gonna come back yeah. to the podcast later she's because she's lion. actually she's yeah. actually the voice of Kiara from in the Lion King too. Mm-hmm. Okay, I, I knew Liz Calloway was the voice yeah. of an of Anastasia. Of Anastasia's yeah. singing voice, but did you know she Kira? She oh. is, so she we will be seeing more of her. Okay, and we we'll also we we will be seeing more of Jason Alexander, who is the voice of Abysmal, who is a new character, mm-hmm. uh, of course, an iconic Aladdin character. Uh, <laughs> he uh, he does the voice of Hugo on the original, the Hunchback oh. of Notre Dame, and he also does the voice in the oh, classic the Disney uh, Hunchback too. Oh my god. So yeah, a lot of n- names that are that will be coming back. <laughs> yeah, so going back to the point of Iago like uh, it, it is weird for me that the original actor decided to come back but I think because he He has two songs. He has that, a, that's he's a sweet he's deal. part of the speaker and I think it was mainly because you know, he was a sidekick so maybe Disney thought that maybe they could pay him less and make his part bigger and mm. then just pay the the same amount to the original cast who were like bigger roles before, but now they didn't have to work as hard. I don't know. I think that's my yeah. that's my conspiracy theory, but I think that's why Iago has a bigger role in this because I don't know. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was just easier to have um, Gilbert Gottfried come back and yeah. So that's okay. my theory. But he does have two songs that are. <sighs> no. I don't think they're gonna be on my Disney playlist anytime <laughs> soon. I want that karaoke night with only a lot of to return oh, no. them to our songs, please. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Gosh. Can you imagine, like, wow. That would be very fun, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> it has better songs. Uh, yeah. Uh, it, it, okay, yeah. We will discuss it in the next episode, but yeah, I do remember <laughs> songs from there. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, for me, my, my final thoughts on, like, uh, the, my general thoughts on um, the Return of Jafar, I think that's that's about it. Like you know, mm-hmm. it doesn't really have like direction. I think they really yeah. don't know what they wanted to do with this. I, I read on Wikipedia, so take this with a grain of salt. But you know, this was the, in the nineties, yeah, and home entertainment was becoming like a huge thing. Like they were releasing all the Disney classics, and you know, it was just. It was taking a lot of, um, it was just becoming a big deal. So I think what Disney, uh, wanted to do, and, and this is from Wikipedia, that they wanted to grab a hold on the market of home entertainment. So, you know, initially, uh, the sequel was going, was going to have a theatrical release. 
But, as you know, some uh, producer was like, no, that's going to take us up to five years to get done. We don't have the time to do that. We don't have the money to do that. So we'll just uh, make this little movie in less than two years. Oh, my God. This movie was made in less than two years. Like, you know... (laughs) Maybe, uh, I don't know how many people know this, but, you know, in in general, the average time an animated movie takes to get done is four years. It's, like, the minimum, I think. I think mean, that's the minimum. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, this was made in less, yeah. in less than two years. And that <laughs> really, really shows, you know, it shows that it's just, it's not yeah. made with the same care and with the same attention no. to detail that the original was. Because it couldn't be. <laughs> because it doesn't have the budget. It doesn't, ha- it didn't have the time to to be Aladdin. So it was just something that was made to kind of re- ma- release it and then just... It actually did pretty good on sales, you know, so that kind of worked because for them. Because it's Aladdin, I think. Because, I, yeah, because it's Aladdin and at that point nobody knew what the Disney sequels were going <laughs> to be like, so they were just like, oh, Aladdin, I'm going to buy this, so like my kids will shut up. <laughs> and so it did really well, actually. Yeah. And yeah. It... it, it it functioned. It had its purpose, and and it did. It it did it well. I think we we, we can hold that against it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it's very sad because this this um, situation with the sequels kind of reminds me of of what Disneyland. How what's what's it called? Disney Europe. What's it oh, called? Oh, uh, Euro Disney. Euro Disney. If you don't know the story, basically, it's, uh, Euro Disney was like this big project that Disney was making and they threw every single dollar they had at it. And basically, Euro Disney kind of failed. It didn't do, it didn't mm-hmm. perform well. Uh, Euro Disney is what we now know as Disneyland Disney Paris. Paris. But when it first opened, it was just a total disaster and it made the company lose like so much money that so many projects were put on oh. hold. And for me, I think I kind of relate that to what uh, the Rescuers Down Under did for the Disney sequels because this was this project that cost a lot of money and they put a lot of heart into it. They put like a lot of faith into it, mm-hmm. and then it didn't perform well. It was it was basically a failure. So that kind of made everyone like we we mentioned this on the previous podcast, but it just it didn't make sense for Disney to keep making keep Disney making sequels, sequels because they realized that it was that the first one failed. So they kind of made it. Uh, more uh, accessible to to release them on home video, and that was kind of the whole context that brought us to the um, the sequel era. That's mm-hmm. direct home video. Okay. Yeah. So I uh, that's that's how I see it, at least. I don't and know I, what you think about it. Yeah, and, and maybe and maybe you were Disney had a big had a more direct impact on. This new home entertainment business, maybe because they wanted money and they wanted it fast. I think Euro Disney was 1992? 92, 93? Something like that. Okay, so yeah, that's my comment. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, so Return of Jafar also, it was used as, you know, as the, like, kind of a pilot episode for the Aladdin series, so there's that as well, you know? Really? Yeah, it was. Yeah, after, I think, um, and the, then the Arabian Nights song that I play at the beginning, I think I haven't watched the, the TV show in a long, long time, maybe like in 15 <laughs> years. But I think the, the beginning of this years? movie, the beginning, of, sorry, the beginning of this movie, uh, the song Arabian Nights, um, is kind of the, the intro, the theme of the Ooh. TV show. So mm. it was kind of, it's kind of like those pilot episodes that are longer than usual. Yeah. So that's what, um, Return of Jafar is basically. Hmm. Okay, I can see that. Yeah, but I don't know where it stands be- between this and King of Thieves. I don't know. I'm not familiar with the Aladdin extended universe, <laughs> so I couldn't tell you. <laughs> how how can you not? I know, right? It's just so iconic. D- didn't you know that like, Yago is the lo- the far lost cousin of Sasu from the Lion King? Like, get your head in the game. Oh no. my god. Can yeah. you imagine? Can you imagine? Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> okay, so, yeah. I, 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 I think I never finished my thoughts, but yeah, that's basically, you know, the animation is abysmal. Oh! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so to speak. 
Ah, ah. It, 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 I'm sorry. Yeah, so, yeah, the animation is... is uh, I, There's this scene in the movie. Yeah. I think it's right at the end of this... Uh, the second Yago song. I don't remember its name. Um, Forget about love. He, this this part this part of the movie is like, what? Because uh-huh. Yago is like trying to... I, I don't remember he was trying to... Yeah, make, the, the, he was trying, trying to... Get him to yeah, together. because the, the, the thing is that, you know, Jasmine finds out that Aladdin has been keeping... Yago hidden, so mm-hmm. she gets very, very, very mad at him. And I think one of my problems with this movie is like everyone, everyone feels so out of character. Yeah, yep. yes. that's so my, bad. My thoughts exactly, especially Jasmine. I think, yeah. I think oh, Jasmine was nothing here. Jasmine was a person. I was so yeah, I was so mad with what they did to her. They just made her like an emotional and lovesick character. Like oh. it's. A far cry from the independent, I'm not a prize to be one woman that we had in the original film. Definitely. Yeah, in this movie, she's like all over Aladdin. I think she's Mm -hmm. like, she, she keeps kissing him at the most random moments. Like she has nothing else to do than just be there and be like arm candy for Aladdin and be like, Oh, what's Jasmine going to think of this? And I need to fix my relationship with Jasmine. That's all she is in this movie. She's just. Aladdin's girlfriend, mm-hmm. and it really bothers me, and, and uh, I don't know, so, yeah, I think, <laughs> it just, it makes me so mad, I, I, I knew, I know that this movie is just, like, nothing, and it's, just like, nothing to be mad about, but, you know, I, th- I keep thinking about it, and it doesn't make any sense, Aladdin should have told Jasmine that he, he was keeping Yago, and what happened, that Yago saved my life, so I'm kind of giving him a second chance, that's all, yeah. she, that's all he had to say, <laughs> they made this big deal, and Jasmine's like, I feel so betrayed, and like, I feel from like, a parent. <laughs> I thought you were never going to lie to me again, like, yeah, they yeah. really, they really harped up, harped up on that one, yeah, about yeah, that. yeah. It was horrible. So yeah, so Yago is trying to get them back together and she he's trying to, you know, make Jasmine make amends with Aladdin and he sings this song called Forget About Love. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so I so I was I was getting to this point that uh, okay. at the end of that song, uh Aladdin is dressed in his prince clothes in the oh, Ali Ababa yeah. clothes and then like they kiss and they come back to them and Aladdin is in his Peasant in, in his peasant clothes, yeah, like, like this. Is, like, do you see what I mean? Like, <laughs> they did not care for this movie one bit. They saw <laughs> like I, they could not have seen it. Like people who watch this movie again and again and again while animating it, animating it, they they sure had to spot that because if I did on my first watch, how could they not? <laughs> but they just didn't care or they didn't have the time to go back and change it. I don't, I don't know what happened. And, like, first of all, it doesn't make sense to me that Aladdin is wearing his peasant clothes. Why why, yeah. why does he do that? Why do you think? <laughs> uh, he he He's just comfortable in those. He doesn't want the palace clothes because he doesn't... Uh, I have no idea. I have no I mean, idea. If he's not comfortable in the prince clothes, well, don't wear them, but wear something <laughs> better. Why? You have why? money now. You have power. Honey. Your girlfriend is the princess. I'm <laughs> sure he. I'm sure she has some clothes lying around. You know, like something decent, some shoes you can wear. Uh, I don't know something that's not like as puffy as the prince <laughs> uh, clothes, but something <laughs> respectable. You know. You have a lot of opinions about clothes. I'm sorry. I just. I, I appreciate, you know, like, the logic behind my characters, and it just doesn't make sense <laughs> to me that Aladdin, being the princess's boyfriend and the future sultan, by the way, <laughs> is going around on peasant clothes. Yeah. I don't right. know. Okay, so, um, do you have something you like about this movie? Like, what, is, what do you think it's the best part about this movie, Tammy? <sighs> You don't have? (laughs) No, I got this. I got this. Give me a second. Give me a second. I can find something. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) The best part about this film is the fact (laughs) that they have all the original actors. I don't even know if that's the best part because it makes me so sad. Uh, I like, think 
it was yeah. part of someone so brilliant and something so brilliant and now they've been reduced to this okay no i know the best part of this one <laughs> okay i love I, I know this is the real one i love puns so the best part of this film is the puns that they have with abysmal's name to abysmal which means bad and unappealing which he is and also this movie so <laughs> oh my god the tea is hot I, I love I love the wordplay. I love puns. I'm an English I was an English major. And I'm an English graduate, so I appreciate that. Very good. All That's right. And D, what's your That was your favorite part about this movie? What do you like about it? That it was 70 minutes long. <laughs> it was short. Yeah, it was it was short and that was good. And that um uh, <laughs> and that uh, um, you can say nothing and that we that fun. had fun watching it because it was so bad and we just kept noticing the errors and bloopers and I, I liked watching it with you Ah, oh, that's so awesome <laughs> <laughs> there we go <laughs> now you're gonna make me feel bad because my answer is like very really different. So. Okay, do it. Uh, I don't know. I think it's hard because you know this movie is what it is. It is a sequel. It's not trying to be anything else. Yeah. It's not. It started strong. With it's the home not statement. looking. It's not looking to get that Oscar. It's not. <laughs> but you know, uh, you know, it's weird because uh, it's weird. But I'm gonna say that. The, the musical numbers I find hilarious. I think they're not, they're not good, I think. But it's just so funny to me because they totally like, I think the only song that kinda narrates something of the movie is that the very first Iago song. Uh, uh-huh. it's called I'm Looking Out for Me. And you know, that's the only song that kinda gets you like in his mindset and he, it's actually trying to say something about the character. Mm-hmm. It doesn't say much. <laughs> but this is trying to move the plot forward, and You're it's so it's, it's, it's ambition. Yeah, it's kind of uh, building the the foundations of Yago, like you know, distorting from Jafar. So that kind of works. Mm-hmm. But you know, this other there's there's we haven't talked about the genie, but I want to talk about the genie. Okay. Uh, but first, uh, he has this song called uh, "Nothing in the World Quite Like a Friend." Oh. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and there's this like big animated sequence music sequence that's just him on uh, different parts of the world oh and you know the movie just stops to let that happen i don't know if you guys are familiar with like the nostalgia critic oh but there's this thing that he calls the big lipped oh, alligator yeah. moments which are just random moments <laughs> of stuff going on this ra- ra- just random stuff normally a music number and then it's just gone it happens and then the plot moves forward and it's never mentioned again. And that's what I think this this song, the Genie song and the Jafar song are. Because Jafar had a song. Jafar Jaf- had a song? Yeah, Jafar has a song. I do remember that. Yeah, it's called uh You're Only Second Rate. He sings that to ah, the Genie and it's hilarious. Right. I, it's hilarious. Like not not like because it wants to be hilarious, but I think I find it very hilarious. I think the Genie song and the Jafar song uh Wait, not ju- not the song, but the I find it just funny that the movie stops and ah, this, okay. the 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 they kind of enter this outside world where it's just like big figures and you know going to other uh, spaces and places and you know the the plot is just stopping and it's just taking you to this like acid trip. <laughs> Uh, and it happens on these two songs, and I think it happens again on Aladdin King of Thieves. We'll, we'll get back on that when we, once we watch that movie. But I think it's something that the animators and, you know, the writers did so they can, you know, fill up the time. Uh, I mean, because it's, it's an Aladdin movie, so it has to have songs. Uh, but, you know, but the plots need, the, the song, they need, needed the run time. The songs need to follow a plot. But there is no plot in this movie, so what do we <laughs> so, do? So you do this. Yeah. You take a song, a random song, and you just animate random stuff to it. <laughs> just be as crazy as you can get. Yeah, because it's a genie. At you this can do point, that. you know, there's this there's this one part where the genie references Bongo. The uh, Bongo the Bear from no, Final Fantasy Free. 
Okay, tell them what that is because I don't <laughs> even know what that was before. I saw okay, that on I don't know what it is. Okay, Bunga the Bear. Bunga the Bear, you know, Fun and Fancy Free is a, an animated, a Walt Disney animated feature. It's a package film. It's Bunga. From the War Times. From the War Times. It's Bunga the Bear and okay. Mickey and the Magic Beans. I don't know what that's called in English. But, Beanstalk? You know, Beanstalk? I don't know. Tell Beanstalk. me, do you know that name? Beanstalk? You know? Yeah, that. that. <laughs> yeah. So this movie that yeah. that puts together these two shorts, and one of the shorts is Bongo the Bear, and you know, we were I was discussing this with with Andy because we saw that bit of trivia on IMDb yeah. that the genie uh, appears as Bongo, and we were looking for it, and and you know, there's this part of there's something in the world quite like a friend where he's kind of dressed like kind of a bear. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I was like, that's not Bongo. That doesn't look like but Bongo were, at all. There. Were, there was no other bear. It was just like that bear, and he had the complexion. He just didn't have the same color of nose, I think. But it was definitely Bongo. But if if you if I didn't know that was Bongo, I I, I would have thought he's just some random bear, or, or maybe I don't know. Do you think he is really Bongo, or just people on the <laughs> internet just say us? I just I said that. I just like the amount of times you said bongo in like the past two minutes. <laughs> Shots every time we say bongo on this podcast. Oh, 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 We're no. sorry. Oh my gosh. No, don't do that. We don't want you to die. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I think, I think he, I think he was supposed to be bongo, but it just didn't have the budget, the time, or the patience, or the care. To color a nose. To, to just make it be bongo. Okay. You know? I don't know. Okay. So, it's a lot of discussion about Bungo. Let's move on. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Th- th- basically, my point was that I-, I enjoy those musical moments because they're, they're, they're just random and they're, like, you know, spastic animation. And there's this part of the Jafar song that kind of reminded me to the Fairly Odd Parents theme <laughs> song because he says something about cake and then the genie's, like, running, you know, I don't know, it, the visuals and the, the word cake and the way he said the word cake kind of reminded me of the fairy odd parents. And I was like, oh, I wish I was watching the fairy odd parents right now. <laughs> wow, when, when something is that bad that you just want to watch the fairy odd parents. No, the fairy odd parents are good. The fairy odd parents were yeah, good on its time. Good. Anyway, so back to, to this. Oh, okay, so I, I, I brought up uh, the genie situation. So, of course, um, the reason Robin Williams didn't come back, as I read on Wikipedia, is that Robin Williams kind of had a fallout yes. with Disney because they used his voice for the promo of Aladdin and he didn't like the way they used it or something or he didn't approve of it. Mm-hmm. And basically he got on this in this big fight with the studio and he refused to come back to play the genie again. And I'm just wondering if he hadn't had that fallout, would he still have come back? <sighs> Ooh. Well, he, he did he, come he, back for, for another, another sequel, sequel, didn't he? he? Yeah, he he came back for the yeah, third so one no. for King of Thieves. So he That's might have. I think he might have. Because he was he willing, willing to do the King of Thieves. Yeah. yeah. Because he, he enjoyed being in, in Aladdin. I think the, the reason of the follow was because uh, they didn't tell him he had, like, his marketing was going to be so big. So big. And do you know, he do you know how much they paid him? Uh-huh. Maybe I think that's that's the that's the reason because they didn't pay him enough to be in every publicity. Seventy-five thousand compared to his usual eight million fee. Wow! wow. I'm surprised he they, took they, it at all. Yeah, I did research on that. They paid they paid him seventy five thousand. He, he said he wanted something for his grandkids. He wanted to be part of something, and he didn't want to like he didn't want to sell a product. So he was like, I'm gonna take a pay- I'm gonna take uh, I'm gonna take a lower pay, but the one condition is that you're not gonna sell me. You're not gonna sell my product. And they did. So yeah. And you know, I also did more research on this, and they said that Disney tried to mend things with Williams by giving him the, a one million dollar Picasso painting. Oh, and, oh my God! Yeah. It didn't work. Oh. It didn't work. Um, one of his friends actually told him that he should burn it on live oh. television. Oh my yeah. god! He didn't Did do he? that either. But like, no, he didn't. No. Okay, that's that's really wow. That's out of spite. Wow. Okay. 
Well, well, he didn't he do that. Did. His friend told him yeah. he probably should, but he was like, no, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. I, I know he, like, went on TV and, like, made a, made a like, little jab at Disney for what they did. Like, I forgot what it was, but, yeah, that I think that's the extent of what happened. Okay. I don't know what happened to the painting. Maybe he still has it. Maybe he doesn't. Uh-huh. I don't know. I hope he does. But, yeah. A remind, reminder of that, those good times. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I had no idea that's that it went so deep you know i just read that he gonna have a fallout because of the marketing yeah. but i didn't know how much they paid him and you know when you think like yeah. the genie and how iconic he is and you know he's he's if you ask any random person what's your favorite character from aladdin a lot of people will say the genie yeah. because he's just genie, that great yeah. me uh, and yeah. thinking well, that he, they paid him, him. I, I don't yeah. want to say that yeah i don't want to say that they took advantage but so they didn't think it true. They took advantage. <laughs> <laughs> so I think they just realized what I read was that when they when they were done with all the recordings and stuff, they realized that they were sitting on a gold mine. They were like, "There's so much quality work here that we need to use it." Like they were like, "We need to use this for the marketing." That's after they made their deal. I don't think they had any intention of like of like going back on their deal. Like I think they really want like. They were, they were going to stay true to it, but then when they realized how much good stuff they, they had, they were like, this is too good to pass up. We need to use it. Yeah, I think so. there's this, um, you know, kind of a trivia thing that there's so much, so many hours of Robin Williams just doing improv as mm-hmm. his genie. Like, he just went to the studio and he went at it and he, and <laughs> the, the directors were just like, wow, and they didn't stop him and he just did his thing. And, you know, I think it was very difficult to kind of take all that uh, improv that he did and just... Not use it. Uh, yeah, not use it. So I think, yeah, I think it was just Robin Williams was having such a good time. And he <laughs> played the genie so well. And he made this memorable character. He He's an amazing character. And it's because of Robin Williams. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I think that it's what you said, that they realized they were sitting on a gold mine and that once Aladdin hit, the- hit theaters, then it was gonna, Genie was gonna be all the rage. Like, he, he was going to yeah. be. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, I think they should have handled it differently. I think they should have spoken to Robin Williams and, you know, yeah. once they decided how they, once they realized how big the Genie was gonna be, they should have told him, they should have offered him something. Maybe that money. Or just something yeah. like, you know, we're going to do this with the genie. We think it has potential. So, you know, we're going to do this to kind of pay you for, you know, because we didn't pay you enough. <laughs> it's just absurd how much they paid him. <laughs> wow. I, I had no idea. That's yeah. very interesting. So, yeah. So that's I'm not even what... sure if he would have taken that, though, because he was like, I don't want to sell anything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe. So, like, like, like maybe I just. I don't want anything. Like, his, 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 I think his, his quote was. The one thing I said I will do is the voice. I'm doing it basically because I want to be part of this animation tradition. I want something for my children. One deal is I just don't want to sell anything, as in Burger King, as in toys, as in stuff. Oh, man. Why did you sign up with Disney then? Yeah, that's... <laughs> that was on you. That's hard. Yeah, I Robin. I such a big thing that he would have enough clout to, you know? Like, he wanted to... He wanted to... I don't know. He just wanted to do the art and not make the money. Oh, that's sweet. But it's Disney. Yeah. Yeah. Disney's market. It's market. Yeah. Yeah. And at this point, Jeffrey Katzenberg was still, like, on the studio. So maybe that's... Maybe he had something to do with it. Uh, I'm not trying to be shady. I'm not trying to be shady at Jeffrey Katzenberg, but yeah. Are you going to start the Jesse... The Jeffrey Katzenberg discourse right now, this early in the podcast? (laughs) Are you... Uh, uh, mm, Well, now, if you put it that way, well, I'm not. (laughs) But I think we're going to get there eventually once we hit, like, The Lion King 2 and something. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, yeah. Basically, that's why this whole genie thing with Robin Williams happened, and that's why we have Dan Castellaneta. Castellaneta. I'm sorry. Castellaneta. I'm sorry, I failed. That Dan Castellaneta as Genie. What do you think of him? How did he perform? Uh, uh, uh. He wasn't bad. You guys know he's the voice of Homer Simpson, right? Yeah. I just realized yeah. like okay. five minutes ago. Like, I can't just I was I was I going, going through my it. my research for the podcast and I was going through the the casting list and I just researched Dan Castellaneta and it said 
uh, oh, he's the voice of Homer Simpson. And I was like, oh, he's not the original voice of Homer Simpson, of course. <laughs> and I researched it and like, yeah, his original voice. And I had yeah. no idea. And I, I turned, I turned it to Andy and I was like, oh, did you know that Dan Castellaneta is the voice of, of Homer Simpson? And she was like, <laughs> yes. <laughs> she was like, everyone knows that. And I was, I was like, everyone yeah. knows that you know, how, how do you dare? Are you mad? <laughs> I I have never watched this. I I've watched the Simpsons maybe like four or five episodes in my whole yeah, life. Yeah, I don't know why. And it's been in Spanish, so sorry if I'm not familiar with the voices. I don't, I don't, I don't know, sure, know why sure. I know it. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So that was basically a big thing that then Keston era the voice of Homer Simpson. I, what I was he already Homer Simpson? Yeah. At this time, I I think yeah. he was right. At this time, yeah, I think so. I think yeah. the Simpsons started in like the eighties. Not true. Mm, no, I, I have no idea. Uh, Again, uh, not a big Simpsons fan. Yeah, I, I maybe feel some, like someone's gonna throw rocks at us. It started in '89, so yeah, he would have still oh. been voicing the Simpsons. For. Okay, so how did they get him to to voice the genie in the they this paid him to home video <laughs> sequel? I mean, they paid, paid everyone, him. but uh, I mean, if <laughs> I were if I was Dave then Casanera and I was already like Homer Simpson, well, he was the idiot, the genie, and yeah. uh, maybe he signed before he saw the movie <laughs> what it was gonna be. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, but well, back to Dan Castellaneta and his yeah. performance as the genie. I think I don't know. It's very hard. He had some big shoes to fill. Yeah. So I cannot blame him to for not you know fulfilling fulfilling it. But I mm-hmm. think he he was respectable as the yeah, genie. Yeah. He didn't um, wreck the character or anything. He wasn't that important. So yeah, yeah. I think yeah. going back to that, he the genie doesn't doesn't do much. He just comes back for because you know he's Aladdin a and he's a genie. Yeah. He's a big character. So he, he wasn't he was given much to work with, with like writing wise, story wise. Like yeah. I think Dan Castellaneta just did well or fine with what he was given. You know, yeah. I think everyone did. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Everyone was like, yeah. everyone, I don't know, I think it's sad because I was going to say, they were all there for the paycheck, and it <laughs> makes me sad because I want to think that when a, a, an actor signs up for Disney, with, with Disney, they sign up because they know that the company has, you know, because the company represents something to people. So, you know, to think that they these people just came back for a paycheck, for me, it kind of breaks my heart, but, you know, I can't blame them because, you know... This it was a movie made in less than two years, <laughs> made in less than two years. So like they had to know that this was not going to be, you know, a, a big thing. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. Um. Okay. So the how do you think it holds up against the original? Is it a, can great? you repeat that? Can you repeat that? How it holds up against the original? <laughs> Is it a great? An upgrade or a downgrade? Or does it add up to the story? Or would you rather not remember this movie? What do you think, Tammy? Okay. Definitely a downgrade. Definitely a downgrade. No question there. there. Yeah. No, no, I don't think. think. Does it add to the story? I mean, I guess guess being in a sequel, sequel, it does does add story story elements. Does it add to the quality of the story? story? (laughs) I don't think so. Yeah. No, no, no really. Diago is a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> like whether that's a good thing or not has yet to be determined by me. But like, <laughs> does it? Does this film add to the overall quality of the original? That's a straight up no. Mm-hmm. No, it does not. Okay, that's my answer. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah, I'm just going to have to agree with you I think um, I, w- I could forgive you know the lack of plot and you know I could forgive that it's a movie that halfway through we're still not getting any Jafar in the movie <laughs> called Re- The Return of Jafar <sighs> but you know I just I, I-, I lost my train of thought <laughs> um, I- well I-, I was saying I could forgive it for all that for the crappy songs if they would have done something with the characters, if at least the characters were, you know, like the original and that they improved on them. Because, you know, I think I'm a big fan of, of movies, but I think my favorite part of movies is always the characters. Yes. So, you know, you have already this big cast of 
of known characters, of loved characters. So you have to be very careful how you treat them. And I think they did not. I mean, mm -hmm. with Diago, I think they did because they couldn't, you know, he was a side, he was a villain that sidekick. And, you know, the whole idea of bringing, of make, redeeming him, basically, <laughs> is kind of interesting on paper, but it's not like well, you well very well executed. And they, you know, it's not fair to sacrifice Aladdin and the genie and the sultan and Jasmine because of Yago. You know, Agreed. I think they kind of but butchered uh, the characters. I think the lessons that they, I said this, I think in the region, the first episode, the pilot episode, but they, they forgot the lessons that they learned on the first movie. Yeah. They kind of just zoom past them and like they have some kind of random case of amnesia and they're like what happened in the first movie even the genie has like his handcuffs yeah and you know I think that's an aesthetic decision because he looks better with the golden handcuffs mm -hmm. but you know it just adds up to the whole not giving a damn about the movie yeah. yeah so yeah I think it's very sad you know I would forgive the bad animation but I cannot forgive how they treat the characters And they sadly, they sadly don't treat them well. They don't honor them. They don't respect them. And they're just kind of a shell of, a, or a shadow of, of what they are in the first movie, you know, especially, especially Jasmine. Yeah. That was harsh. <laughs> and I agree with everything. No. It's the truth. It's the truth. I agree with everything you just said. Don't make shitty sequels if you can't handle yeah. the truth. <laughs> Okay. Um, I basically agree with everything you both said. And yeah, that's everything. I, I, I can't believe Aladdin to the return of Jafar invented the trope of redemption <laughs> of villains. <laughs> uh, Good. What a feat. Okay. What a feat. Yeah. Are we Are doing we our rating still? still? Wait, wait, wait. What, what? Wait, I, I just remembered this scene of the movie. And I want to bring this up because uh, we talked about this on the Rescuers Down Under. You know, do, do you remember, Tammy, in the Rescuers Down Under, that there's this whole subplot with um, the bird and he kind of crashes and there's this, yeah. you know, oh, yeah. nurses uh -huh. and doctors oh, taking oh, care oh, of him? I love that. I love that. I love oh, that. That kind of happens again. Oh, just, you're right. I oh. found that so hilarious because... What are the odds that two Disney sequels in a row have the same scene? You know, basically what happens that uh, I think oh. Iago just had just had his encounter with Jafar, and he's just wounded or something. And yeah. the genie, being the genie, kind of turns into a doctor and turns uh, Abu into a nurse. Oh yeah, and they kind of like perform some kind of sur surgery on Iago, and it just I just looked at it and I was like what kind of kink did the Disney <laughs> sequel animators had that they had to include a nursing a a, a, a two, two nursing sequences on these two animated sequels and I mean cinematic parallels right oh my god well, I mean I, I <laughs> don't think a theme, a theme and, and the, the patients quote unquote are bird, birds oh. and, and and the the doctor is crazy and oh. just uh, I just found that so, like, interesting and hilarious and weird. And I wanted to bring this up because... It's so <laughs> weird. It's so well, surreal that, you know, what are the odds? Like, this, it, someone had, someone made a decision. Someone made a very conscious decision about this, I'm sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, uh, I don't want to talk right. about this anymore. It's, it's uncomfortable. <laughs> okay, right before we get to the ratings. Yeah. Is there something else you want to get off your chest about the movie, about the animation, or special uh, sequence or something? Um, I, me. Uh huh. I, 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 Gina was there. I just had to open up a clip of of the original Aladdin because I just, I just couldn't. My 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 brain couldn't take it anymore. I needed real animation. I needed real real art. You know. Uh, I understand. Uh, it was. It was a cleanse. Yeah, <laughs> that's everything. I wanted to mention also that uh, <laughs> the design of uh, the carpet uh -huh. is 
like such a downgrade because uh, you know in the book. original in the original it's like this it has all these details mm-hmm. and it's like so well designed and in the sequel it's like oh it's a rectangle with, with things uh, with things inside uh, we're not gonna pay that much attention to it and yeah I just I, I, I also I wanna, we, we didn't bring this up Disney fake deaths oh mm-hmm. we had a Disney fake death I think we have two Because, <laughs> you know, uh, there's this part where the, uh, you know, Jafar is like on, at its peak and he's evil, he's taking over, and Aladdin comes flying on the carpet and Jafar does something and the, the carpet kind of freezes and it crashes on the ground and, oh, it, yeah. and it, it was- shatters. And, and Andy and I were watching it together and we're like, what? Did, they just, kill- Did they just kill the carpet? Yeah. It was very sad. And then, you know, as I said, uh, Iago does this very heroic thing, mm-hmm. and he saves the day by throwing the lamp on the lava, but he's very well beaten up by Jafar, so everyone is like, you know, he kind of dies, quote-unquote, <laughs> but then, he, of course, he comes back to life, so yeah, and then the carpet comes back again, so nobody, no one dies, but... But they may, they want to make you think that he's gonna die. Uh, would Iago, if Iago died, would that have made it a better movie? Uh, um, it would be weird. It would be <laughs> such, I don't know, because. It would be a weirder movie. <laughs> it would be very weird because why, why go through the trouble of redeeming him if you were going him to off. kill him at the end? Wink, wink at Ben Solo. <laughs> <laughs> wink. I <laughs> I'm sorry. Save Yago the pirate tape and solo. We were watching it. We just were finding this very weird Star Wars parallel. I don't remember them right now, but the big one. That was one, the biggest one. But the big one was, you know, Yago is just Ben Solo. He's just, he's just trying to redeem himself. I need fan art. I need fan art right now. We need to always find the Star Wars parallels in these podcasts. We do. We can. That's, that's our superpower, okay? That's our gift. That's our curse. <laughs> oh, there's was something. Oh, I one last thing I'm gonna say. Uh-huh. Uh, it's just so hilarious that at the climax of of the movie, you know, Aladdin is also like beaten up and he's like kind of unconscious and something. And there's like this big like hole on the ground that they're in, and it's kind of closing once Jafar is defeated. And Genie takes Iago out of the the hole. He saves like he he takes him out. And Ginny just leaves a lot in there. Do you remember that? I, how I re- do you remember this stuff? I don't remember. I remember that. it because I was so distressed because it was it's just something that really stuck to me about the yeah. movie. Because I was like, Ginny, Aladdin's right there. He's 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 about to get you know crushed yeah. by the 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 ground, and you're not gonna do anything. <laughs> he's just he just stands there with Yago and Jasmine, and poor Aladdin has to climb himself out of the hole. You know, oh my god! What's the use of having a genie as a best friend if if, if the you genie will die. is not gonna take you out of a a hot love <laughs> hole? You know, genie is lacking on the friendship department. He took oh out Diago and he couldn't take out Aladdin. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. Just throwing oh. it out there. Hey guys, I found something I like in my note. It's <gasps> buried oh. deep down into my notes, but I saw it. Okay. Okay. So I, I this is what I wrote. I like how Iago stands up for himself and realizes he's important to the villain. Because I always, like, there's always this trope of how sidekicks are way smarter than, like, the main villain. And you always feel like, why do they stay with them? And Iago realizes, I don't need this shit. I'm better than you. I'm gonna go. Find my way. And I was like, you go, Iago. You do it. (laughs) Yeah, that's a good thing. Way to realize the truth. Hashtag, go Iago. I think, yeah, I think... You know, like, now that you mentioned, I think Yago is like the best, the the objectively best part of the movie because oh it's basically God. his movie. I can't believe we're saying this. I mean, you <laughs> know, in a movie, the point. in a movie like this, you know, Yago being the best thing is not that far out because you know he, he has nothing to compete with. You know, yeah. <laughs> just the fact that he is there and he kind of has an arc that yeah, just yeah. makes it like that's more than you would expect from a movie like this that was made in less than two years. <laughs> less, less, uh, and yeah, I think you're you're very right, Tammy. I think Iago has a very interesting change of heart, and he kind of realizes his own value as his own 
character. <laughs> you know, he's not gonna get, you know, manipulated by Jafar again. <laughs> so, yeah, very nice. I think that's that's interesting. Hashtag go Yago. <laughs> go Yago. And, but I, I like that he's still like himself and at the yeah. end when... Like, they when, didn't change his character. Like, like, they just changed, changed his motivation. motivation. They didn't change, like, who is. He's still so very annoying. annoying. Yeah, because at the oh. end, the end, at the end, the Sultan is like offering him, offering Jafar. Uh, I'm sorry, offering Aladdin the po- the post of um, the Grand Vizier, and mm-hmm. Aladdin rejects it because he wants to go through the world with Jasmine. But when he says no, I was like, "What's wrong with you? Yeah, what's wrong with you, kid? Just take it. You're gonna be rich." And, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, does does the Sultan offer the Grand Vizier post to? To Iago, did I just make that up in my mind? Huh. No, no, he didn't. Okay, I, I think I, I think I had a dream about that. Like, oh my gosh! Yeah, uh, yeah, because yeah, yeah, I remember because at the end I was like, well, so the Sultan doesn't have a Grand Vizier. It's all Aladdin's fault. <laughs> the moment when Iago was a better character than than the Aladdin, moment, you know, you know that something team. went wrong in this movie. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! I'm kidding, but am I? Oh. Okay, so I, those are kind of our general thoughts on um, yeah. Aladdin, the return of Jafar, or, you know, Aladdin, Iago the movie. Iago the movie. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, overall, I think we kind of agree that uh, it's nothing to write home about. So do you want to um, give a rating? Do you have kind of a rating that you could give it? I do. Okay. Uh-huh. I will I not show not this show to my children. <laughs> That's a very good rating. <laughs> yeah. That's that's very good. Do you, Andy? My rating is throw this into a genie lamp and throw it to the <laughs> lava. <laughs> that's my rating. Okay. Uh, okay, let me think about it because I did not prepare my rating. But <laughs> um, my rating is it's what it is after being made in two years. <laughs> it is what you would expect after being made in less than two years. So that's that's my that's all I can say about that. So yes. overall, I think Return of Jafar is definitely a downgrade. I think we can all agree on that. Yeah, it's not something that you know. I want I want to think I want to say that we are not against all the Disney sequels. I think we all oh. have at least one that we enjoy, that we actually enjoy, not just no, because, I, you know. I enjoy several, and you ma- you guys might be surprised by one I like. <gasps> all right? But I enjoy several as well. I enjoy several as well, and I will admit that some of them, it's more nostalgia than anything, but mm-hmm. some of them are actually, like, they can stand on their own, you know. They, they may not be Disney classic, you know, masterpieces, but as movies and as what they are and with the low budget that some of them have, they, they had no business being as good as they were, some of them. <laughs> so, yeah, it's not all of them and it's definitely not the majority, but, you know, not every movie is Return of Jafar. So, yeah, there are some good things in the horizon, but for and I now... I think there was one that actually had a theatrical release. There, there are several. There are several. Yeah, have, I think Re- uh, Return to Neverland had a theatrical and Jungle release. Book too. And Jungle Book, 2, Jungle Book 2 as well, oh, but that's Jungle more Book like into the... Release? Yeah, I remember, fun, I, rem- I remember watching it on the, on the theater. Yeah. Yeah, so that's more like in the, into the 2000s. Yeah. So it's going to take a while for us to get there. But mm-hmm. yeah, I was, I just wanted to say that because I think we were so negative on this podcast, <laughs> on this episode, because uh, it's just so hard to, to think of something good to say about this movie because it just, but it, it is what it is because, uh, you yeah. know, it was just not something that was very, um, you know, not a lot of work was put into it. Actually, uh, it was animated, a big part of it in Australia, and I didn't mention oh. this earlier, and I think we should have. Yeah. But a, part, a big part of it was animated in Australia once, uh, back when Disney had, uh, an animation studios overseas, and another part of it was animated in Japan. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. uh, it was not even something that, you know, the big studios in, in the US wanted to work in. They yeah. just kind of handled it to, to the overseas studios. Which are all closed now, by the way. Oh, but yeah. during the, their time, they did, you know, this kind of side jobs for Disney, and one of them, and some of them were the Disney sequels, and what eventually became, you know, part of uh, Disney Tunes, which was the studio that kind of delivered 
the director home video and the sequels and the Tinkerbell movies. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so for the longest movie. time, the Disney Overseas Studios kind of had the task of animating this uh, <laughs> movies, I want to call them. <laughs> so yeah, product. This, this product. Th- this multimedia <laughs> product. Oh. And yeah, so they are what they are because, you know, there's just not the same passion towards them. Yeah. That that you can expect from, you know, the the animated features. So we're just getting started and you know, I think we all kind of did enjoy Down Under, the rescue down under. We yeah. kind of enjoyed it for what it is and you know, mm-hmm. now Return of Jafar we kind of just uh eh, we're yeah. so we're kind of, it's a low point, definitely. But I hope uh, the next one is Aladdin King of Thieves. Yes. And I, I was like I was going to say that. That and I think we all agree that that's better than this one, at least. Yes. I haven't watched it in a while. Best thing Best is Kasim. Best thing is Kasim. But, Kasim. yes, I was oh, going to say that. Kasim. At least, at oh. least it has Kasim in it. And so that... I want that, to watch it right now. That already marks it as, <laughs> like, it has at least a point in my book. Okay. Okay, we're getting ahead of ourselves. So but we're getting ahead of ourselves, yes. I think, goodbye. I think that's all we have to say right now for the podcast. And um... We are very excited um, because um, a lot of things have been happening. The Disorder guys uh, <laughs> knew about us and they kind of know about the podcast now and we were excited. We um, Can you look up very quickly the name of the artist for the art because I want to give a shout out to them? Uh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Let me. Uh, yeah, so one, uh, as Sandy is looking for, for, for a bit of information that we need, I... I just really, I'm really excited. I'm kind of excited to tackle Alien King of Thieves because I remember I watched it fairly yeah. recently and I remember having a good time. So yeah, it's going to okay. be fun talking about that. And yeah. 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 Uh, mm-hmm. Lizzie Wincy on Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr. Wait, can you, can you repeat that? Lizzie Wincy on Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr. Yeah, Lin- Lindsay. Lindsay. Lizzie Wimsey. Lizzie. Lizzie is the girl who we um, commissioned to make the art for the podcast. So she, it's a very cute doodle. I love it so much. <laughs> and if you like it She's as well, amazing. go check her out. She has a lot of beautiful stuff. That's only her doodles. You know, she has much, much more detailed and, you know, um, styles. So, yeah, go check her out. And once that we're here giving shout outs. Um, I want to give a shout out to our other podcast. Oh. Andy and I host another podcast called The Real Alliance. So if you're into Star Wars, and especially if you're into Ryan Kylo Ren, you should listen to our podcast. Mm-hmm. It's on iTunes and it's on SoundCloud. And, and you can follow that at, at Real Alliance. So you can go check that out. Uh, for now, you can just um, follow us to Division on Twitter as well. It's at Two Division Pod. Mm-hmm. You can send us an email with your comments, with your questions, with anything you want to tell tell us at uh, two division podcast at gmail.com. You can find the podcast on iTunes and, of course, SoundCloud, as I said. You can find us on YouTube. You can subscribe to the channel. And, you know, uh, we want to take this time to ask you guys that you give us a review on iTunes and you give us a rating because it really does help a lot. We're just getting started with a small independent podcast and your reviews and your ratings really help us to, um, to help. It helps people find the podcast. Yeah. So, you know, more views and more listens and more people that you can share the podcast with. Please do. We love you. Thank you. <laughs> and also you can follow to the vision also on Tumblr. Yes. And yeah, that's it. That's basically all the social media. Uh, please, please share this with your friends if you like it. And also, if you don't, maybe maybe the, your friends will like it. <laughs> and we just hope that you had fun listening to it. Yeah. Uh, do you want to say your goodbyes, yeah, yeah. guys? Okay. Bye-bye. Thank uh, you for uh, listening. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks uh, for listening. This was a blast, and I hope you had a blast. <laughs> yeah. Goodbye. Thank you. See Goodbye. You in the Thank you. Bye. It's going to be a good one. Bye. <laughs>